Hi everyone, Wally Nichols here with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending May the 14th, 2021. Here's my thoughts on crypto. They um, proved it out this week with the pirating of the Colonial Pipeline. Now I'm, I'm intimately familiar with Colonial Pipeline Company and um, uh, the pipeline uh, industry in generally and that particular pipeline let me just say this uh, shame on them for leaving themselves susceptible shame on the United States uh, government for uh, for not foreseeing uh, this uh, sooner and doing something about it you can't really fault the Biden administration they've only been in there uh, not quite uh, even you know six months yet but what we can do is uh, is look back at previous administrations why the internet's been around a long time now, so why measures haven't been put in place, required to be put in place to manage our, our strategic infrastructure and make it more robust against this type of piracy. This is reminiscent of the piracy uh, that the British Empire faced in the Caribbean uh, centuries ago. So uh, here's the deal about crypto. It, uh, it, it, it's it's an, an easy mechanism for pirates to use, and this is what they did, apparently. Um, but here's here's my real beef with with crypto. So so that's from the that's from the law enforcement standpoint. There, you know, how long are governments going to sit there and watch that go on, or there, are governments going to let that uh, you know mess with uh, their central currencies? That's that's was my initial problem with crypto, but boiled down succinctly, it's this: gold has always been a value. Why? Because there, by logic, is an as a finite uh, amount of gold. Now they used to present that that t same notion about diamonds. That proved not to be true. I put to you crypto. And, and I have to walk back. I think I think a few weeks ago I, I, I may have made a statement that crypto is like gold. Crypto is more like diamonds. I put to you crypto generally, Bitcoin, the whole nine yards, the whole panoply of crypto, uh, blockchain-based currency is more like diamonds, okay, than it is gold or silver. Certainly not like copper, all right? not a commodity in that standpoint here's why now Elon Musk came came forward this week and said look too much of an energy hog well hello we've known that all along those, those the carbon footprint of, of Bitcoin miners of crypto miners generally is is unbelievable all right it, it's just it, it's staggering so they're energy hogs in that respect here's the real problem though here's why I think they're like diamonds if you can take one blockchain and develop a currency around it, Bitcoin, then there is a finite amount of resources in Bitcoin. But then if you can take another, and Dogecoin, Ethereum, if you can continue to replicate these currencies, just a different blockchain, of what value is that? So really, there's no finite amount of crypto. There's an infinite amount of crypto because all you have to do is continue to make a different blockchain. There's an infinite amount of blockchain available to us and algorithms, okay? It's all mathematically based. That's my problem with crypto. That's why we trade, you know, we've got a platform, people, that you really need to be in that, uh, you know, and make some, make some uh coin pun intended uh, we, we can make that available to you but for people that are, are, are saving and investing uh, looking forward for retirement looking forward for legacy we've got a lot of more robust alternatives available to you let's turn now to the markets okay this week here's what we did in the markets right now uh, we're at a little early afternoon on Friday May the 14th 2021 and the markets are trying uh, to come back uh, from a really rough week, what we saw them do was, uh, you know, take take some pretty steep dives, tech uh, extremely. So, yeah, the, the inflation concerns, the reopening trade version 2.0 is now back. Okay, um, 
I, I find the inflation thing a little bit overstated. I think what because I mean, it's like we didn't know this with all the packages that are out there. You didn't know before this week that inflation was uh, it, so. So they've talked about inflation rearing its ugly head. We know that it's going to be for a, a minute uh, a, a, a spiked, but then as time goes by, it should it it should uh, resolve itself. Then you had this concern about Colonial Pipeline, a gas line, uh, gasoline shortage, and so you've got prices spiking there. Uh, so that added fuel to the fire, pun intended, and uh, and and so we had this uh, we had this uh, you know bit of a panic earlier in the week, and then and then stocks tried to come back, find a bottom. Looks like they may have found a bottom. I'm not convinced yet, but may have found a bottom uh, Thursday. Or Wednesday night, overnight Thursday, started trying to uh, rally back uh, to get back from Wednesday. Uh, Thursday uh, was uh, uh, an inside day up. They did not uh, pass until today. This morning they finally uh, surpassed a Wednesday's trade. Okay, which was an ugly candle, uh, unless you were short. All right, we're we're hedged. My clients are hedged. My clients uh, are, are are looking good. Um, we, I, I warned you guys all about this a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, um, you know, be careful out there. And even today, all right. So now, what we've seen is that the indexes, all the major indexes, have now come back uh, to resistance. Okay, the, the the nearest resistance that they that they have, and they seem to be holding that. We'll see what happens by the close of a Friday's trade. But it's Friday. Okay, anything can happen over the weekend usually does. So uh, we'll see what they do next week in terms of whether or not they can rally through those resistance. NASDAQ is in middle of um, uh, nowhere right now. So you get a long ways from the 100 day to the 50, get back to the 50 and much less in the middle of the, of the trade. Um, the small and mid, mid cap uh, are, are are looking much more robust as one would expect with the reopening and the S&P 500 is uh, is back uh, up uh, looking more robust. None of these uh, are, are back yet though. Okay, as of where we sit, as the, I'm saying this, we're at resistance. I don't see any reason for them to, unless it's just, let's finish a week strong and they come back and they, and they pump, push through. Uh, to close Friday on an up note, I guess they could do that. But really, we're looking back to Tuesday's uh, 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 highs, you know, maybe uh, to, to see uh, the last bullish, uh, uh, to, to see if we can really make a bullish finish to the week. So that remains to be seen. Um, I'll be I'll be uh, waiting to see next week before we make any more moves. Uh, there there's a few spotty plays out there. Generally, I mean, value, <laughs> duh. Uh, that, that's uh, that's the, the shining star this week. I mean, that's what that's what we've had. Um, so we'll we'll see where everything else is. Basically, all the indexes are weak down trends, trying to reverse. So we probably found a bottom this week. Let's see if we can carry it forward into next week. If you need some help, contact me. If you want to talk about things or discuss uh, uh, further. Uh, I, I'm available, all right? Just reach out to me and remember to like, subscribe, and share so that uh, your friends and family can get this good advice too. And let me tell you what, if you've got an in-service 401k plan with your employer, you really should be on, on our uh, subscription list because for pennies a day, we're going to save you thousands against these market downturns and we're also going to make you thousands as you go forward. I mean, come on, guys, $25 a month for to, to, to customize advice on your employer-based plans? I'll see you next week.